Thank you so much for closing the door. Um, I know that folks are still getting into their seats. I'm going to ask if you can find yourself a seat now. Please, board members that are present can make sure that they signed in as well as sat. There, we have some reserved seats here for board members. Everyone's time. Okay? I'm going to, it's going to look like I'm speaking into a microphone. And that's because WNET is present. And those folks that are watching us live stream, the way that they can understand or hear us is through the microphones that we have here. Um, when we try to come and set up, and there seems to be something wrong with the speaker system here, which is okay for now because we are very appreciative to be auditorium and we want to keep it that way. So those of you who are enjoying our refreshments, we're going to ask just for that house rule is to make sure that you are you know, tidy. And if you do something falls, please pick it up. And we have garbage cans in the back. My name is Andre T. Mitchell. I'm the chairperson for Community Board 5. I want to welcome you all to our February's general membership meeting tonight. And for members who are community members who are familiar with us, they know that at CB5, we go beyond the norm and we try to make our way so that everyone here is comfortable. We try to feed you a little something, something but we don't want you to fall asleep on us, okay? Because it's a lot of information that we want to share and we want everybody to be abreast of it and astute so that you can take it back to your neighbors and share some of this good information. But again, I want to welcome everybody. I don't want you to be discouraged if this is your first meeting. I did make my way around and there's a number of you who this is their first meeting. So board members, community members, please, you know, greet the person next to you. Say hello to them, welcome them. Let folks feel comfortable. <laughs> we are one community. We have one voice in Community Board 5. So we don't want it to seem like we're separated or divided because East New York is not divided like one or some would like to think. We are one neighborhood, a beautiful neighborhood, am I right? And we love our community, and we have a great pride in our community because we got great people. I do want to say in my opening, thank you to Principal Towles. Just please stand. If you would like, Principal, would you like to welcome everybody from your seat, or you want to come up? It's up to you. Michael. Oh, that's I'm newly appointed to this building here at PS 158. It is my honor to serve the children. Principal Wilson was here previously. She has retired after 12 years, so I'm going to continue the work that she has started. I'm glad to be here. I was an AP at, principal at PS 13, so I'm very familiar with East New York. So again, thank you for being here, and um, I'm Want to get some more information so we can continue to push our school forward and our scholars can be ready to be successful students in the 21st century. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. So, Principal Towels and I, we met, and I have personal history here at the PS 158. 15 years ago, when I started my nonprofit called Man Up Incorporated. The young man who unfortunately lost his life name was Deshaun Hill. He was eight years old, for some of us who recall. And his little brother and his little sister, the three of them, attended 158. And so when the family needed help to go back to work, and if you can imagine how frightened they were about the two children who survived, we stepped in as a community 15 years ago. And we decided that we will pick the children up every day from school. And it was I, 
who was the person who would come to this very auditorium to pick up the two remaining children of the Hill family here at 158. So me returning to 158, it brought back so many memories. And I, I was telling the principal that. So this building and this school and this neighborhood that surrounds it is very personal to me because that's what community is all about. But again, thank you so much. And we appreciate the uh, opportunity. We've been on tour, community, for those of you who don't know. As a community board, we've been making our way around the whole district. And we've been trying to get to every nook and cranny, every neighborhood, every corner. We want to visit every church, every mosque that opens their door to us in the interim of our office being renovated at 127 Pennsylvania Avenue. So we've been on tour every, every day since, and it's actually been a blessing. Am I right, board members? Yeah. Because it's nothing like taking the meeting to the people versus the people having to come to a meeting and meeting the people on the ground and hearing directly from you. And then when we have, come, when we have a meeting, we bring resources with us. We're fortunate that we see we have a number of elected officials and their officers and their representatives are present at all of our meetings. Our district office, headed by our district manager, Melinda Perkins, their team is here at all of our meetings. And our board members, we sit on committees throughout the month. So any issue that may arise, we can refer you to that amount of resource. So you are not alone at CB5. We are very serious about what we do as a community board. The way that we change our meetings versus other meetings is that we put community first. We believe in that. How about you? Right? <laughs> community should be first. So folks that come to our meetings, they are learned, they are taught right away if they came to make a presentation I know they got to get back home, but this is our backyard. And we're not coming out to listen to them first. They're coming out to listen to you first and hear you and hopefully help us help ourselves. Am I right? We're not a, we're not a community that's on a crutch. We're not a handicapped community. We can do it ourselves. Provide us with our means. We are entitled to our fair share, is that correct? And we would do it ourselves. We did it at Man Up Inc. 15 years ago, working with our young people. We continue to do that every day since. And our community is a better neighborhood as a result of such. So we just want people to know that when you come to our meetings, community is first. And we're gonna drive that all the way home. So sit back, strap your seatbelts on, because sometimes they can be a stone. <laughs> Get a little bumpy. A little but let me say this, we run a very tight and orderly meeting. This is not the launching pad for someone to come here with that gaka. Got it? Just can't come here and spew blah, blah, blah. You got two minutes to get it in and get it out. <laughs> Respectfully. I'm not undermining any issue. But we're going to listen. The board members here, we're going to listen. We are here to listen to you. But when you start repeating yourself, or you start going long, too long, like this is a school, and we ain't, you know what I mean? I'm going to respectfully, my board members, and Ms. Joyce Grayboy is our sergeant at arms, beautiful sister. <laughs> but she knows how to cut the mic off. We just ask that you respect the time and other people that need to speak. Is that fair? So we're going to put you first. Then our elected officials can come behind you. And then we're going to go to other people who are present. And after everybody else speaks, then the community board membership should be present by that time so we can have a quorum so that we can conduct our business. This is business that impacts you and it has an impact on you directly. So you should stick around and you should want to listen to how we conduct business too. Because at the end of the day, you can't say you didn't know about it. Okay? When that building goes up on your block, hello? You can't say you didn't know about it. 
You got to stick around. We listen to you respectfully. You got to stick around and we encourage you. Order of the day. Is that fair, everyone? Okay? And we're not, you know, for watch, watch how simple it goes. It really goes really smooth when everybody's on the same page. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our calling secretary, Ms. Jessica, and she will call folks' names up. She's going to act like the mic is on. because. And let me say thank you to WNET. Let's say thank you. Thank you to WNET. Thank you to the city council for renewing that they are able to come back another year for six months and cover our community boards. For folks that don't know our meetings are live stream, that means that this is meeting is going live, that folks at home can watch what's happening right now in real time, and all they have to do is go to YouTube and put in Community Board 5, and the meeting will come up. So folks that are homebound, some of our elderly, some of our sick, that want to be here, and they are here with us in spirit, they can literally be at home and watch us on television or on their, on their mobile phones. So that's why we have to speak into the mic because WNET is present. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate you. Sister uh, Jessica Berry. The first speaker for the evening is Latisse Lane. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Latisse Lane, and I'm the program director for a community-based program in East New York, known as the CRIB, which stands for Community Resources in Brooklyn. Um, I'm here today to, again, remind people that this program is a program that caters to co-designing with community members the types of things that they want to see. So we don't tell you what we do, we ask you what we should be doing. So on that note, we do have some calendars. I don't want to run through every event because we have a lot that the community wants to see happening. So we do have a men's group that happens once a month called Men's Lives Matter, where we cater to specifically the men's needs in the community. We do have toddler me play groups for working mothers who have infants once a month on Saturdays. Um, we have Parent cafes, which are parent-led support and engagement groups. Um, they're led by community parents. One of the things I specifically want to talk about today, two things actually, is our weekly open house. So those of you, I don't have enough time to talk about it, but you want to know more about what we do, join us any Friday between the hours of 12 and 3. We serve lunch and we give tours and we talk about in more detail the things that we do at our program and how you can be a part of it. But one way to be a part of it is through our advisory board, which we're creating, a community advisory board. Uh, we know how these things work and how the voices of community get into programs. So we do have an upcoming, what we call dream team, which is when we bring community members together to decide the things that we're doing at the crib. This upcoming dream team meeting on March 17th from one to three, we will be having an info session and a discussion about how you can be a part of our community board or how you can become a parent leader at the crib. So I'm welcoming community members, join us, and you can definitely be a part of what we're having. So there are flyers and brochures, and my information is on the flyers and brochures. Thank you. Thank you. Karim Walker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Kareem Walker. Oh, let's try this out. Okay. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kareem Walker. Okay. I'm actually a resident of East New York. I've been a resident for about a year and a half now. Um, I came for the first time partly because I wanted to, as many of you know, as many New Yorkers know, affordable housing is a bit of a problem in this city. Another problem that doesn't really get talked about is illegal housing. What do I mean? buildings that don't have certificates of occupancy, buildings that, are, that were illegally converted. And I'm speaking from experience because I'm currently living in a building that has, no, that, has no, that has neither certificate of occupancy nor was illegally zoned. And as a result, I'm being forced to move. I, a little background. I was in the homeless shelter system for about two years. I found the apartment, or rather the room, via my housing specialist at, uh, in Bushwick at the time. They moved me out, signed the lease, everything looked Hunky Dory, excuse my, who uses that word anyway. Um, but it was not until about 
five months ago, I found out that the apartment had no certificate of occupancy, which was, of course, a major red flag. Now, I'm, now of course, my landlords fought like Dickens to say that they denied it. They said there was no, that what I said was not true, but they finally owned up to it. If you are living in a building that has no, if you're not sure that your building is, has a certificate of occupancy, check the Department of Buildings. So they always, every building that was built after 1938 should have one, must have one, and if there, does, there has to be a reason why. And if you don't, if your building does not have a certificate of occupancy, obviously you, could, you obviously have the right to withhold rent. Your landlord will, will most likely fight you, but if they do, you most likely will win because you could just show the judge, your honor, no certificate of occupancy, they had no right to collect rent. Though this in and of itself is, would not be problematic, but given that I was out of the homeless shelter, I also had one of the city's housing vouchers. So there's a lot of corruption going on between, and a lot of collusion going on between the real estate industry, oh, thank you, and the, um, and, and HR. So just do your homework, and if you know someone who might be in this situation, direct them to HRA. God bless everybody. Titus Allen. This is my co-worker right here and partner, Richard. Richard. <laughs> We're from the Center of um, Treatment and Innovation. We're dealing with the opioid crisis. This is the second wave. It went around one time, right? Around the 70s, late 80s, early 80s. But it's back again, and it's opioids with fentanyl. And they're putting fentanyl on everything, and people are dying. So we're out here. We're mobile outreach. We're going to every neighborhood in Brooklyn, every precinct, these houses, uh, hospitals. We're spreading the word. If you know anybody that needs help, we'll come get them. We'll get them placed and we'll give them the help they need. Okay, because this is a very, very bad epidemic and we're trying to head it off before it becomes a pandemic. It's not only in Brooklyn. Brooklyn has a big enough problem. Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, you name it. But we're representing Brooklyn. Okay? We have information in the back there. We have flyers. We have our palm cards. We have brochures. Please take one, okay? And anybody that has any kind of business cards, give them to us, okay? So we can put them in our roller decks. If you need us, we will call you, okay? I want you to understand that people are dying. Okay? I've never seen so many young people on this stuff. Hooked. You know what I mean? I've never seen so many. You know, and I'm not saying that the pharmaceuticals don't have something to do with it, because it does. Oxycodone, Percocets, all these different things come from them. Okay? And it's a brisk business all over the city, and these kids are getting into it. I've never seen so many women losing their children. I've never seen so many young women falling out of college and into drugs. We have to do something about it. We have to take this thing very, very serious. Because if it's not in your house, it'll be in there soon. Or it'll be in your neighbor's house. I'm going to turn this over to Richard. Thank you. I'm going to be really, really brief. Uh, my name is Richard. Uh, I'm one of the peer advocates for Philly Mobile Outreach. I'm one of the people that will be working directly with whoever comes into our program. Whoever comes to us for help, I'm one of the people that's boots on the ground, in the trenches, that will give uh, uh, people who are looking for help uh, services, okay? If you know anyone who is in need of services, who wants to stop using, who wants to get their life together, have them give us a call. We're, we will stick with them from day one to the end, and we continue with our follow-ups. And everything. We don't drop the ball. We won't drop the ball on nobody. We're here to assist our community and, uh, and and help our community build up and grow up. Thank you very much for letting us know. Tiny Corbett. Hi, 
everyone. My name is Kenny Corbett. Uh, I am a resident of East New York. I just recently moved in the neighborhood a few years ago. And uh, I've always been very actively involved in my community. So this is like any pet peeve tonight is the sanitation in East New York. Uh, I, I'm a homeowner. I live on Hendricks. And I am constantly Uh, responsible and uh, I have some concerns with that I've been working with sanitation I've even been working with C uh, CB5 with one of your reps in your sanitation area because I noticed that there are certain lots in our neighborhood that we're really being irresponsible uh, there's a particular lot that I really want CB5 to get involved in uh, sanitation is making an effort to uh, to clean it but it's really not sanitation's problem because it's privately owned Okay, and I'm saying at this point, yes, I can make the calls of sanitation, which I have, but again, it's just like any other property in our neighborhood, we need to be responsible for our lots. It is not my responsibility or your responsibility to sweep in front of someone else's place. So I have sanitation put two cans there, so two green cans on the corner of Hendricks and Linden, uh, between Linden and, and Stanley, and it's been helping. But again, I'm the one that has to take the green bag out, tie the green bag. I mean, I'm not responsible. My, I'm not responsible for that, especially when there's commercial stores there that are benefiting from me bagging up every day. So I can go, I can Uber it, maybe not even Uber. I can do uh, GPS, and it's a totally different neighborhood. Why? Why do I have to lower my standards? Because I'm used to living in a neighborhood that respects Sanitation, you don't throw things out the window, you don't pitch your chicken bones out the window. This is just not acceptable. If I lived a mile away, they don't do those things. And if they did, the community gets involved. So what am I here to pitching? I would like CB5 to get more involved. I'm a real estate broker, I can get the information. I have pictures here for a lot right now that's deplorable. And to think that people have to live like that is not satisfactory. So that's all I have to say, good night. Tammy Green. Uh, good evening, community, and praise the Lord. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, yeah, that sounds better. All right, I don't think this mic is on, but I'm going to try to talk loud anyway. Uh, I first want to give a special thanks and congratulations to the brother that won the for those people that went out and voted, uh, it's important for us to support our community because we're only as strong as the community that we support. Uh, I want to also acknowledge the, the second to last day of Black History Month. Black history doesn't begin and end in one month, but it's a life and ongoing journey in this country and abroad. So for all those who contribute to that, you can give yourselves a round of applause. We all have a story to tell no matter where we come from, so let's always keep the heritage and the dream alive for every individual in this country, and especially those who are our descendants and those who are coming into the country now. We have to fight and stay together for hu human rights and uh, also all civil rights. Uh, I want you guys to write this down and put it in your phones. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to read what it is. It's the H.R. 1242 Act, A-C-T. It's the H.R. 1242 Act. It is important to read and research what this is about and formulate your plan of action. I want to also give a special thanks for all those who supported the Boots Are Made for Warming. February 10th, it was a great success. People donated boots. The community was active. They donated boots. We gave out boots and coats to the needy and uh, homeless families of East New York, and it was a blessing. Also, too, uh, I represent Pro Fitness 101, the ultimate in urban fitness training. We have finished our winter training, and now we have something called, here come the bell, 
uh, get your sweat and fit on. So come check it out. Check out also too, let's not forget to worship. We have Cornerstone Seven Day Adventist Church. There's flyers in the back. And we also have Synodrill. Uh, it's flyers in the back. And remember, in hard times, let's continue to worship and praise the Lord because he is truly our blessings. Have a blessed evening. Heli Ortega. Hello, beautiful people. I'm um, speaking today on behalf of the Coalition for Community Advancement, and we want to extend an invite to you this Friday. Uh, we're filming the, we're showing a screening of the documentary "The Bronx: The Decade of Fire," which is specifically about the 1970s, how you know the Bronx buildings just were on fire. Um, but it's meant to motivate us as Black and Latino communities to take more of an active role in our community and to become more engaged. So the information um, is available in the back, but for people who just want to take a quick note, it'll be this Friday, March 1st at 6.30. We are providing childcare and light refreshments. Um, so it'll be a screening of the film, which is about an hour and 20 minutes, and then there'll be discussion afterward. It's at the YMCA that's on the corner of Highland and Jamaica. So 570 Jamaica. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Brother Paul Muhammad. I'm a part of the Coalition for Community Advancement as well as other things in the community. But to follow up with the coalition, that we also are having a lobby day where we're actually going to Albany. More support for what we're fighting for in our community. That's our homes, that's our property, and so forth. It's a continual fight after the rezoning of our community. As we see right now, the only thing that's been built is shelter hotels. We haven't seen any significant changes for what would help us in this community. So the fight still continues. So we're going, one of the particular things we're going to fight for a flip tax, a tax to actually stop these speculators from coming in this community, that which is actually they're taking homes that they can get, and they're forcing us in foreclosure, water bills and so forth on a, and these aggressive bank foreclosures. Now they're coming, they buy our homes, they fix it up a little bit, what we paid, or, three or four hundred thousand they're selling for seven hundred fifty thousand skewing the whole tax rates that are in this community and forcing the rest of us to be moved out this is not uh gentrification it's ethnic cleansing 95 percent of the people living in this community are black and latino and you're latino you're just a black person who speaks spanish so we're staying in this community and it's a reality what we're doing uh, we're definitely going to be up there and we're going to be pushing for those state assembly people that are surrounding this district to support us in this continued fight to protect our homes and our community for our children Flyers are in the back of the room. Thank you so much. Albert Scott. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, that's what I want. All right, uh, I'm, I won't be before you long. I'm just here just to invite each and every one of you. All right. I'm just here to invite each and every one of you to the Churches United for Worldwide Action in conjunction with the Homeowners Association, the uh, East New York and Brownsville real, real Estate Development Update. If you are interested in knowing what is being built in your community and what the impact is, attend. If you heard uh, words such as vital Brooklyn, the next question should be is, where is the money, Governor? If you are aware of the development that's going behind Home Depot, the uh, 888 Fountain Initiative, and you wanna know what's being built over there? Come to this event. If you wanna be updated on what's happening on at the, in the industrial business zone, come to this event. There is a four, a four, Four, four indoor soccer field stadium in East New York, guys, on a square block. Come out. Things are being built left, right, and above. You need to be updated, not only be updated, understanding the impact that it will have, not only amongst homeowners, but that impact individuals that rent as well. Because when the taxes goes up, and if a person owns a one or two family home, and they have a tenant upstairs, some of that cost will be passed on 
in the form of higher rents. We are in this together. So I'm simply inviting each and every one of you to attend the Brownsville and East New York real estate development update. In addition to this, there will be action plans and next steps. Thank you for your time. Um, this will be Saturday, March 9th at the New Lodge Public Library. Flyers are in the back. Um, it will be at 10.30 a.m. Sergeant Goldgrab. That guy who was on trial today, he got five minutes at the congressional hearing, so I'll try to keep it as quick as possible. My name is Sergeant Goldgrab. Uh, we're from Transit District 33. I have two of my officers here with me in the back, Officer August and Officer Richards. Uh, Transit District 33 just rolled out a little over a month ago the NCO program. I don't know if anybody here is familiar with the program or not. Rolled out NCO, how it translates to transit, real quick, like I said, I only got two minutes, is for the most part, our entire transit district is broken down into three zones. Officer August and Officer Richards are responsible for the most part for what covers this area. They have the A-line, the entire A-line that we cover, which is going to be from Grant Avenue all the way to Kingston and through. Uh, in the coming weeks, hopefully by the end of this month, you'll start to see their actual picture in the train station. If you ride those trains, when you enter the station, there's going to be a big sign on the wall. It's going to have their beautiful faces with the GSM, the general station manager that handles that group of stations. And there's going to be email address at the bottom of the picture. I'm talking fast because I'm trying to get it out. Uh, there's going to be email address at the bottom of the picture. Uh, if you want to write it down, it's TD33. It's going to be TD33NCO at NYPD.org. That's TD33NCO at NYPD.org. That email address is already in effect. Uh, if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns at any point in time, that email address is always active, and obviously we don't work 24-7, but the way this program is designed is that me, as a supervisor, I am now responsible for everything that Transit District 33 covers. They are now responsible for anything that happens on their lines. So they have the A-line over here, like I said, from Grant to Kingston through, and then they have the L-line from Broadway Junction down to Rock Park. And I have maps here if anybody wants, we'll hang out. They have business cards, uh, the way it's broken down. Uh, we'll take questions. If they, I know there's other um, uh, units that are here. You mentioned you do outreach. Any, yeah. any, anybody that's doing outreach, we are very big into outreach. We want to do as many joint operations as possible. Obviously with the homeless conditions and the, the K2 that's rampant right now. Uh, part of what NCO is and part of what things that we're trying to do is we're trying not to arrest these people that need these help. So if somebody is a drug addict and they're homeless and they jump in turnstiles, the program is designed to kind of Defer, get them, get them services, see what they need, see what they want. You know, we're filling up the, thank you. That's, that's, what, that's what the program is for. I can't take all the credit because I didn't invent the program. I'm just helping with the rollout, but, but that's what it is. Am I done with my time? Two minutes? All right, like I said, I, I will be here. Uh, if anybody has questions, comments, concerns, we have got business cards and then we're open to all ideas. Thank you for your time. Charles Bullock. Uh, good evening, everybody. All right, before I get started, I want y'all to write down this website. It is www.nycdistrictcouncil.com. All right, um, I'm a representative for my community, and I'm also a representative for the Carpenters Union. I've been a member of the Carpenters Union for 14 years. I'm a shop steward, and I'm a member of the executive board as a trustee. My goal is to try to help all the young men in my community get jobs. Everybody's not fit for college. Everybody can't get that Fortune 500 job. I started from the bottom. I've waited on the line halfway around the block, and I got my name in. And uh, in 14 years later, I'm here as a um, carpenter, shop steward, and also a community board member. Um, yeah. uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of construction going on in East New York, and all the construction isn't good. 
There's jobs being outsourced to people that don't even live in the community. People are getting killed on the job sites. And um, I think the, the men in the community, they could work on these job sites. I gotta go all the way to the city and walk past all these job sites that are going on. Up the block, on the corner of my block, there's a 500 apartment development going on. My, my goal is to try to create apprenticeship opportunities for the young men in the community so they can have a job with benefits. Not a job that gives you a little short-term money, you floors, and it's gone. How about a pension? How about 401k? How about, how about medical? You got to... <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I want my people to be able to afford to live in the community because the plan that they have here is not for us. The plan is for the, the other people and the people with the, the hippies with all that, all money. That's what the plan is for. All these storage units that's going on around here, there's a plan. Affordable. Because somebody talk affordable ownership. They building, they're, they're building all these storage units so they can outprice us with the rent that all these developers are coming in with their new properties doing. They're going to outprice us and kick us out, put out stuff in storage and auction it off when we can't afford it. That's their plan. We have to wake up East New York and try to come together and encourage young men that, that's going on a corner that may not know where to go. There's apprenticeship programs. There's opportunities out there. Everybody's not skilled to be behind a the computer. There's people that are great with their hands. And I just want to offer the opportunity for all the young men in the community to make that job. As a first year apprentice, you start off with $21 an hour and apprentice in the union. After the fourth year, you finish off with $52.50 an hour pay, and then benefits, you get $40 an hour. So I'm pretty much worth a little bit more of $100 an hour when I step out. Everybody could, could get that same opportunity. And if you know men or women, there's a women's program called NU. If you look it up, it's, it's the non-traditional employment for women. You could Google it, NU. Women can get in the union, any union they want. And there's also other programs called Building Works. But look up nycdistrictcouncil.com. And I'll be speaking at a um, town hall tomorrow for the union. It's at, on 90, 9602 Flatlands Avenue at Baraka on Bereka Baptist Church, Senator Passard will also be there. I'll be speaking for the union so we can actually have union jobs in the community. Thank you. Good call. Good evening, good evening. I'm not sure if it's on. Good evening. All right, we're not going to use this. We're going to speak loud. My fault. I'm sorry, y'all. What was good call? Sometimes speak into the mic, though, because we're on live. We're all on broadcast. Excuse me. My fault. So uh, we're from Good Call. Basically, it's a 24-7 free hotline. It provides free attorneys in all five boroughs if you're under arrest. Um, we started off in the Bronx. We're all five boroughs now. So right now, what we're trying to do is attack the community as much as possible, as the ones that can use it. So we're hitting all 59 community board meetings as, as soon as we can, trying to get the cornerstones of the community to impact as much as possible. I'm the manager of the outreach. This is the engagement coordinator right here. Um, and the team is ran by Brothers of Color. Again, it's for free attorneys in all five boroughs. We're just looking to do the right thing. We have cards in the back. Um, if anybody has any questions, anything that they need from us, we'll be loving to come out to your organization. We'd love to come to your school. We'd love to come to your home, wherever we can, to pass out this information. We all know a lot of black brothers or brown brothers or sisters that have went through the, the Rikers Island or the judicial system through no lack of representation or legal representation at all type. So we're trying to change that narrative as much as we can by making the playing field level. I appreciate your time. You can, uh, my name is... Mo Yes, you can find us on all channels on social media. That's Good Call NYC. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, my name is Malik, <laughs> and I hope you guys have a great time. And thank you for hearing our work. And we have cards and information in the back. Just doing a check-in. <laughs>
How's everyone doing? Fine. Right? It's going well, right? All right. We, we go in there. We, we midstream. We now want to hear from our elected officials and their representatives if they're present. Julia Salazar. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Franco, as I'm sure you you all know, uh, and I am now the representative for Cypress Hills in East New York under the new Senator Julia Salazar. Thank you very much for that. Um, I am also your chair of uh, chair and chair of education and youth. Uh, so. Please understand that we are really pushing for education. It's personal for us, right? And so she gets to hear it in her ear every single day. Um, and we're constantly advocating for, for our children. But to give you a quick feedback of uh, what the new senator is doing on behalf of the new senator, uh, we just met with the Coalition for Community Advancement, and uh, in regards to the flip tax, the senator introduced the flip tax, which would Decentify flipping, right? So as Brother Poe and everyone else mentioned, everyone is after our homes. Everyone is after our land. You know why? Because our home is equity. Our homes are wealth. And so they're coming for, for our wealth. They're coming for the little bit that we can leave behind to our children. And so the senator's working really hard in uh, pushing for the flip tax, decentifying investors, and knowing that for every home that they try to flip, they will be taxed between 10 and 15 percent. Uh, she is trying to push it to go as high as 25 percent and really send a message not to come and mess with East New York. Thank you. She is also currently. Uh, including in the budget uh, funding for the CBOs that are working uh, in home foreclosure prevention. Again, homes are crucial and is extremely important. Last but not least, uh, here in East New York, our schools are owed 23 million and a half. Our schools in East New York in District 18, uh, in Senate District 18 alone, our kids are owed $23 million and a half dollars from the, new, from the state. The, it, well, it's District 19, but in Senate District 18. This school that we're currently sitting on is owed $808,000, $808,000, this school alone, okay? So she is fighting so that our kids get, out, get the funding that they deserve back. With that, uh, we're in our temporary location, 1068 Broadway, and uh, please feel free to come by, and uh, I can give you guys my cell number, which is 718-781-1287. Please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Mr. Melvin Faulkner. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. On behalf of Assemblyman Charles Barron, we have some information tonight that we're sharing with you, and we expect everyone present that either own a home, rent a home, or living in somebody else's home to be in attendance for this one. There's a brand new fly in the back. I got here late, but before everybody leave here today, pick up one of these flyers. We're having the Department of Finance come to our community to address the issues that's important to us. Now, if you don't know what a tax assessment form looks like, I bought my personal one 
to let you see what it looks like. Recognize this form? This form comes every year in the month of January. And topsy-turvy sometime is the middle name for this form. We have one in my office now that we're fighting for, and we do fight with other state agencies, we do fight with the city of New York. Anytime we find out that somebody's being taken advantage of, we go to war. This lady had an increase in the year from 17 into the year 18 of $243,000 on our property. We said it's not happening, and basically we asked that the Department of Finance bring as many people with them as possible. But if you come, we're asking you to bring these things, this form, two years in concession. It means that in the year 1670, we'd like to see that tax form. 1718, we'd like to see that tax form. Because then you can sit down and you can say, hey, I don't appreciate what is going on with my taxes in the black and Hispanic community. That 243,000 sound like a millionaire's territory rather than Brownsville and East New York. So we're saying to you now, come prepared with the forms. And you, you won't have to, we won't have to fight for you, you can fight for yourself. I'll tell you this here now. One of the things that we don't do in the black and Hispanic community is to declare war when we feel something's wrong. If you think it's wrong, then it's a good possibility. You want to know what happened when you're right? A lady that was overtaxed, the next year she didn't have to pay a dime in the way of taxes. So we're asking you, come prepared. The date is March 5th. It's right around the corner. It's going to be at the Marjorie Richardson Court. Marjorie Richardson is the one that's on uh, Hendrick Street at uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. Pitkin, Pitkin Avenue, not Pennsylvania. Pitkin Avenue. Uh, 359 Hendrick Street, corner of Pitkin Avenue. We hope to see you all there. The city capacity, we're going to have nothing but chairs. There won't be any tables for you around. We need all the space we can get. So come prepared to go to war on your property taxes. Thank you. Um, Carlos Soto. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Carlos Soto. I'm the Director of Community Relations for Council Member Espinal. I uh, want to inform you about a serious issue that's uh, plaguing the community, and uh, it's, it's, it's spreading. So, oh, okay. good. So this, this community is under assault, and it's by developers. Is there this mic on? No? All right. So we, we are in a serious situation where our homes are being threatened by developers, and they're using tactics to steal it from retired seniors, uh, homeowners that, that are uh, living paycheck to paycheck, so what they're doing is they're making false 311 complaints about the building and they'll do it to an entire block and then they'll send you a letter in the mail saying hey you got a violation i could fix it it's a lie they're just trying to have dob the department of buildings go to your house give you a violation for anything that they find and then you can't afford it it goes to a lien they buy the lien and your house is gone so if you're a homeowner and you got a violation from the Department of Buildings and you ask your neighbor and they got the same exact violation, contact our office. If you're a renter, it affects you as well because if your landlord loses the house, you may lose your apartment. So if you, if you feel or if you hear about it and, and you, your neighbors are talking about it, contact our office. Our doors are open. We'll help you out. We have the district attorney's office investigating it. And uh, we're located at 1945 Broadway. Uh, right around the corner from Broadway Junction. The number there is 718-642-8664. You can always ask for me, Carlos. I'm always available. If you want, I can give you my card uh, at the end of the, the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Miss Anita Fisher. Hello, good evening. Greetings from Councilmember Inez Barron. Um, sorry, Councilmember is not here today. She's in a meeting, but she left me with instructions. <laughs> it will be signed by the mayor on Monday regarding legalizing basement apartments. I where you could go on New York City Council, and you're going for legislation, intro 1004, which says administration program to facilitate the creation of an alternate, alter of habitable apartments in basements and cellars. This is happening to one and two family homes. Okay, so this is a pilot program. It's a three-year pilot program that's only being done in East New York, only in East New York, for three years. Now, if it's successful, then they will do this throughout the city. But since the mayor's signing off on this, as of Monday, it's a go. I've had uh, quite a few homeowners interested in this basement conversion. It would help you with income if you're just occupying two apartments in your home. So it's something to look into. Um, so you can call the office, you can leave your name and your, your information so that someone could reach out to you for an appointment, come and see if you are eligible. Because right now I think they're only working with 40 homeowners, but it's hard to be eligible based on, uh, I guess, the, the, the structure, what needs to happen. So uh, if you're interested, please give a call to the office. Uh, the number there is 718-649-9495. And I also have the, new, the newsletters from our office, which, which has my picture on it. <laughs> I received an award for being um, that person in the community <laughs> that reaches out to all the organizations to assist our community, to assist our people. I'm constantly doing trainings because there's always something new coming up and I wanna be abreast so I can help my community. I love my community and I want you to prosper, succeed and make it, okay? And so you can't do this alone, we can't do this alone. We gotta do this as a group, we do this as a family. We are a village. Testing. Anthony Drummond. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. Um, first thing, I just want to announce um, first from Borough Hall, for those who are community board members currently and those who have applied, if you submitted your application online um, or if you haven't, please do, um, because at the end of this month, that's going to be it and we're gonna start reviewing all applications. So for those who are currently on the board that have not get it in ASAP, those who are looking to apply to be on the board, also get it in ASAP before the month end um, because we're gonna start reviewing all the applications and that in addition to CB5 as well as all other 18 boards in the borough starting next month, which begins next week. So I wanted to make that announcement. Second one, um, and I, saw that it might be empty or gone, but I left flyers out on March 15th um, from 2 to 6 p.m. at Brooklyn Borough Hall. Um, the Borough I'm sorry, State Senator Velmanette Montgomery will be hosting a forum on third party transfer, TPT hearing. Um, with that forum, it's gonna be, um, we have the senators and I'm trying to remember it offhand, Senator Robert Jackson, who chairs the city committee for the Senate, uh, Senator Brian Benjamin, who chairs the state's revenue and budget committee, uh, assembly member Al Taylor, who chairs a subcommittee, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, uh, Senator Kavanaugh, who is the chair, I believe, of the judiciary committee, 
and we have a senator, I think Liz, Liz Kruger, who chairs the Finance Committee. Okay, you have, okay. I just want to be correct on it. So let me just read it off here. Senator Brad Horman, chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator Jackson, chair of the Cities Committee. Senator Kevin Parker, chairman of the Energy and Telecommunications Committee. And Brian Benjamin, chairman of the Revenue and Budget Committee. And Al, Assembly Member Al Taylor, who chairs the Subcommittee on Regulated Mortgage Lenders. So for those especially here in East New York that own property. Obviously, the third party transfer, just for a bit of background, is related to HPD and people who own property that deed fraud and been a big issue that's been happening, particularly in Brownstone, Brooklyn, but we know there's been some cases in some So if you know anybody that's dealing with that or have issues with that, please attend this hearing. Um, Though it's a local issue here in the city of New York, the state senator, senator wants to take this and make this a state issue. Hopefully put some legislation forward that will help rectify this problem. So I just want to put that out there and announce to everyone on that. And I'll give that back to the chair. And then the last and final thing I want to mention, I want to echo uh, Mr. Scott in terms of the form that he mentioned earlier on March 9th. I will strongly encourage you all, if you're able to make it or know someone, a couple of them, I will be at this one as well. But there is a lot of things that are happening, if you, as you heard from other speakers, in relation to development that's occurring in this area. And even upcoming, I will just put it out there with Department of City Planning in terms of a potential zoning text amendment change related to flood, the FEMA map post Sandy because now it looks like that it's going to be extended up a little bit further. Some properties may be within that um, that were not in the flood zone area, may in this new change be in the flood zone area. So I know they're going to be making a presentation to the Community Board 5 in the next coming months, but these type of issues are prevalent that is going on. So I strongly encourage you guys, if you can make it March 9th, to attend that. Other than that, that's it. Thank you very much. Michelle Wilkes. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay, um, a couple of announcements. Uh, first, I want to bring greetings on behalf of Assemblywoman Walker, who cannot be here because she is in session. Uh, she asked me to give you her best, and she will make every attempt once she, if she can ever get here on a day that is not in session, um, she will basically come and greet everyone herself. Um, March is picking up. That's budget month. So um, just a couple of days to put on your radar. Um, the Assemblywoman is going to do a budget wrap-up. So um, every, when, once the budget is set, she's going to have a event at Brookdale Hospital, which is gonna be a budget wrap up. It's going to be scheduled for April 11th. And that's when she's gonna go through bit by bit so you can see exactly where the money is going, um, how much money we brought down and how and where exactly it's going to go. And you can also voice your opinion on, you know, anything that you feel that um, she should actually fund with the budget. So that's that. Um, March 23rd, um, she's throwing a bail reform town hall. Now, um, the, the Assemblywoman has been at the forefront of the situation with bail. I don't know how many of you have been following it, but um, she is serious about this bail. It makes no sense that our loved ones should have to sit in jail because they can't afford the bail. People are going broke, mortgages, um, you know, taking out second mortgages on houses just to afford bail. And it's ridiculous. So we're definitely going to have a bail reform town hall uh, Saturday, March 23rd, 4 p.m. at Borough Hall. Um, we're going to be distributing flyers to the board as soon as we get everything printed up. Um, just a couple of reminders. She asked me to remind you that the Democratic primary is changed. It's now June 25th instead of September. So this is something she definitely wanted me to mention to you all. So please mark your calendars that the primary is now on the 5th 
instead of September. So the 25th of June is now the, is now the primary, the Democratic primary. June 25th. Okay. Um, um, neighborhood advisory board meetings are every third Saturday in our office, 400 Rockaway Avenue. Please come. We have uh, for refreshments breakfast because you know it's early, and uh, we always have speakers. Gives you an opportunity to interact with the assemblywoman, and uh, that way give face to face time with her while she's in the district. Um, we also have. Uh, Department of Health from, excuse me, the Department of State Health, and um, they sign people up for health care in our office every second Wednesday. I put flyers on the table for you, so be, feel free to take them. And also, we have the Department of Labor that comes in every Thursday. So they will be in our office tomorrow from 10 to 3. And what they do is they sit down with you, whether it's to help you find a job, fix your resume. They're excellent with fixing resumes. So if you're applying and you're not getting any calls back, bring your resume, have her look at it, and they actually tweak it, and you'll be surprised. So many people have come back and said, thank you, I found a job. Okay, so definitely it's free. They're coming to us. You don't have to go all the way downtown Brooklyn anymore. Uh, it's Rockaway Avenue, 400 Rockaway Avenue. Hop on 14, come on down and see us. And um, we'll be glad to have you. Um, they're there from 10 to 3. The bail reform is going to be at 4 p.m. at Borough Hall. That's a Saturday, so we expect to see a lot of people there. I don't want to hear you got to work. Come on down because this affects everyone. If it doesn't affect you, it affects someone you know. And uh, lastly, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I just want to, I'll get them at the end. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm sorry for taking so much time. Okay, I'm going to check in again. <laughs> East New York, are you with me? Yeah. CB5, are you with me? Yeah. Good to know because you have just been informed, okay, through our Community Voices segment of our meeting, so much information, am I correct? Yeah. I don't know if you had take notes or not, you should be on the back side. If you, you basically was taking notes, you should have two pages worth of notes to take. And the beauty of our meetings is that they are recorded, and so we do have minutes and public people, community people, if you choose to want a copy of the minutes, you can just contact our district office as well, and that way you don't have to miss a beat. Again, let's clap it up for our community voices. We appreciate everyone that did come up and make their presentation and share their information. We appreciate our elected officials, representatives that are with us each month. We appreciate you, community. Now it's your job. Knowledge is power, but it's nothing if you don't do something with it, okay? And it's not yours, okay? It's, uh, the idea is to share it with someone else, okay? You can't take it with you where you're going. You got to pass it on. Please tell a neighbor, tell a friend, share this information so that more people can be informed and be involved like you are involved. That's what community people can do. The simple thing of passing on information. So again, we want to appreciate everyone that did get a chance to speak. I want you to pay note. Uh, excuse me for folks that's in the back, though, because I've been wanting to say this all night. Now, some of y'all been a little rude. All right? Not a lot, but, but, but some of you. You can't, my mama say what, talk and chew gum at the same time. Please, let's respect the people so that way we can hear. We don't have the, the sound system up. Watch this, Principal Towels, yet. That's, that's right, that's right. That's right, I'm with us, that's right. See, I got, I got her back. 
but we will have it. But please, in the interim, let's, because we are live streaming, we want to make sure that everybody can hear it. Okay, some of us that have follow-up information, you're welcome to mingle a little bit after the meeting is over inside, and then you can take all of the meeting outside. <laughs> Stay out there as long as you choose. But I bet you, me, that you won't be out there long because that hawk um, is talking. Board members that are present, I want to thank you all. Can you please raise your hand? Board five, community board members. Can we show hands? Because we've been sitting there by you, and I appreciate you so much. Because we, if you haven't been, we've been listening to you. Okay? Brother Angus was getting ready to get, I said, don't do it. Because <laughs> some of these board members, I'm telling you, we're some of the fierce community people that you can find. We ain't just get on the board just by chance. We were active, loud, sometimes consistent, effective voices. We know how to write, we still do, right? We know how to count, we still do, right? And that's how we got active on the board. So this, the part that we've been doing is listening to you though. Now it's your turn community to listen to us because the members are present and they made their way here. We wanna honor them too to give them a chance to also get through this meeting accordingly. In the past, I'm gonna tell you what happened in the past. When there wasn't a quorum, like tonight, you would have heard a motion to adjourn. In the beginning of the meeting, while you were still in your coat, <laughs> chewing on some food. Matter of fact, in the past, you wouldn't even be chewing on no food. That started with this administration, with this leadership. Yeah. Respectfully. <laughs> but if it wasn't no quorum, they was out of here, Jack. And you been coming in and say, where everybody going? Ain't no quorum, ain't make no meeting. But the charter and the bylaws of this good board says that you can still hold a meeting as long as there's no need for a vote. So we can do everything in the agenda except for vote when we don't have a quorum. And so we made the decision. Let's honor our community. Let's get this information out there, okay? So allow us to please breeze through the remainder of our agenda of the night. It is 8 o'clock. We should be out of here very shortly. And everybody can make their way back home in a safe and orderly fashion. So I don't have to approve any meetings, minutes from last month, but board members, you all have a copy. The folders, we thank the district office again for preparing the folders for us. Yeah. We also have the agenda and the minutes are in the folders. We now are gonna to go to committee reports. Committees are formed on community boards for the volunteers and for the record, let me reiterate, this is a voluntary role. Volunteers here. We're doing community service. This is our civic responsibility. We're not paid to do this. But we meet not only on a general level, we meet on a committee level as well. And committees that met throughout the month, this is your chance to give reports if you had a meeting. You could do everything except for bring anything that needed a vote. Okay? Are there any committee reports? Brother Kenny Watson, Environmental and Parks Committee. Here you go, sir. You're going to act. You know. Hotep. Hotep. <laughs> My name is Brother Kenny Watson, and I'm the chair for the uh, Sanitation and Environmental Committee and also the co chair for Parks. Sister Kile is not here tonight, so I'll be giving the report for tonight. Um, first, I would like to thank Sister. Sister Kenny Corbett, I pronounce yes. Corbett. Um, we have some new blood, and Brother uh, Gregory Ingram, right? And um, we just like to you know, let you know that we have some new members because in the past we haven't been making uh, quorum. 
and uh, we have some new blood, and they're coming for y'all, you know, for some of those people who haven't been showing up seat. So y'all, y'all watch out, because our committee's coming along. Um, one of the things um, we're going to be talking about tonight, Parks, Parks Department came out, Parks Department came out um, to do a, a report or show of, uh, um, they, had, they, they were showing their, their, their plans for a new park that they're looking to, to build on Williams Avenue, on the other side of Success Garden. Are you familiar with the, with the um, site? Mm -hmm. And um, we just had a few concerns about that, that location there. Um, they, they was building the site without any restrooms. And we was concerned for our community that um, when they don't have any place to use the bathroom, where are our young people going to use the restrooms? So we weren't able to give them a letter of su support. And uh, there were some concerns that, you know, we're saying some people were saying that we were late. I said, no, we right on time. All right? So um, we couldn't give that letter of support of, for, um, for the second reason was that we didn't make call on um, that particular day, but we're going to bring it back to the table and we're going to have them come back and um, try to uh, try to make some changes, even though it's a little late in the game. And they said that um, it may be delayed. My rebuttal to that was that they delayed it for 10 to 15 years. Another year and a half won't hurt, you know what I'm saying, this, um, you know, the, the, the hold back. So, um, and we also had a concern about them choosing the necessary uh, GCs. The general uh, to 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 um, do some of this contracting, and um, we want to make sure that they do the outreach to the community to let them know that these things are going on. But they said there were some scope meetings. I didn't hear about it, um, but they were there, mm -hmm. and I, maybe that's you know my fault for not making it to that scope meeting to try to you know to put some of these concerns into place. But I'm here now, and I'm looking forward to doing more work with Parks Department because um, we combine Parks Department along, uh, alongside with, with the uh, Sanitation and Environmental uh, Committee. Um, the next thing and the last thing, um, we want you to see um, June 29th, CB5 and Parks Environmental Committee 2019 Vi Environmental Summit at 11.30 to 3 p.m. We, um, location will be um, determined in the future. Um, if you, have, you need more information on this um, summit, you can contact myself and Sister Kile. My con contact number is 347-600-9533. And Sister Kile's uh, contact is 646-361-0800. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 9-1. Okay, and refreshments will be served. <laughs> Any other committees would like to give a report? Okay, good, moving right along. <laughs> but like one part about his, his report I like, he said, there's another committee. All right, I got you, sister. He said, we got some new blood, and they coming for your seats. I like that part. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Uh, so just very, very promptly, uh, we're working on a youth town hall where we will be uh, bringing up uh, CUNY, uh, summer youth employments, right? We need jobs and we need to be able to give those tools to the youth and get them involved. Um, we will also have uh, different workshops going on so as we create the flyer we will send it out to the community board and to the district office and we would hope that everyone is there and that you guys invite as many youth as possible um, on another note uh, there is an election going on besides the election that just passed and this is the uh, for the CEC for the community council uh, please apply if you're a parent the deadline for it is on uh, March 6 and you can go online let me know if you're interested in getting some this is another way of advocating for your child and being in, being at the table when decisions are being made thank you
our district managers report, Ms. Melinda Perkins. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the district office, I want to say maybe about a year and a half ago, we put together a service directory for Community Board 5, and it went over very well. How many people did receive one? Uh, we tried to give them out as, to as many people as possible throughout the district, but it was extremely helpful. And we will be doing another print of that service directory, so we want you to contact us if there was any community-based organization that we did not include in that first print please make sure to contact us give us that information by March 15th send it directly I want to just jump to the committee meeting to give some updates on the L line and that shutdown and how it's going to impact the stations within community board five it's important and I'm, I'm glad I hear so many community members are attending committee meeting committee meetings Make sure you continue to do that. Committees are strong in CB5, but community members make it stronger. Your input is vital. So make sure you come out to our committee meetings. The committee list is in the back. The calendar is there. Make sure you come. I won't keep you any longer. My district report is in the back. And I just want to let it, everyone know we do have to push a little more on the time because um, the permit is a little bit earlier than we thought. So I'll cut it short, OK? <laughs> That was a hint, everyone. Thank you. Can we clap for our district office? The entire, the entire team, they do an awesome job at prepping, making sure we're ready, making sure the food is prepared, the table settings, all of the above. So we thank them very much. We have the best district office in the borough. Um, Board members, community members, I too have my, um, my report. If you choose to want a copy of my report, the chairman writes a report every month. You're welcome to it, but board members, you all should have received it. It's in your folder. And bottom line, some of these things have already been said. But I just want to let folks know, because this time of the year we would have had our, our elections, the nomination committees and all of that, but if you recall, we revised our, board, our bylaws, and we gave executive committees the, that, that term. And so the next election is not this year, but the same time this year, 2020. Um, we also, you know, uh, we heard the borough president, um, Anthony Drummond, talked about the renewal applications. Board members, if you, your name is on that list, um, as he said, if, you, if it's not done in time, it causes a big problem. Um, so you, 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 you won't be renewed, although, as we know, there's some people we don't want them to renew their application. <laughs> I'm being honest. Um, and with that said, um, so we just want folks that are, that are doing the right thing to make sure that your applications are um, done in time. So please check with Anthony. He has the list if you, have, if you, don't, if you don't know. Um, we also, in the... Um, my, my point is about the attendance in the committees. We even did something last year, we, we formed joint committees. We tried to bring two committees together so that we would make quorum, but we still struggle a bit, as you heard already through some reports. So we are going to really be taking a look at those members who are not showing up. Um, and if that's the case, I'm going to be making a strong argument to the borough president himself and to Mr. Drummond. Don't renew certain people's applications. These seats shouldn't be empty. This is a once a month commitment. Once a month. You come to your committee meetings once a month. It's only two day a month commitment. Two days. Please. Don't renew somebody's application if they don't show up. Let some of the community members, there we have some outstanding, let's clap it up for our community members. Those members that come to committee meetings that have joined committees. Community, you can join committees. You don't have to be appointed. If you have an interest in any area, you can join the committee, literally, and even vote on a committee level. 
So please be encouraged you. And that's a good entry to getting appointed down the road because you was a volunteer prior. So if you have an interest and it's only maximum is like two hours, a meeting maximum. If a meeting is going over two hours, it must be a very, very important meeting. Or somebody jiving on grandstanding and we shouldn't be let that happen. But it's only two hours for, for your community that we love, that you say you love. I mean, come on. Some of us give more than that to video games. So my report really talks about that. And at the end of the day, we want to hopefully get a board that's very active, continue to be active. I just want to commend some of you especially some of the newbies that have been coming on board and coming to the meetings. We appreciate you, and we really do thank you for your service. <laughs> old business. Nothing for old business. New business, board members. See how that happens? Now, before I entertain a motion to adjourn, let me just give you some dismissal orders. Now it's time to say goodbye to all my family. MIC, see you real soon. KEY, come on. Why? Because we like you and you cannot stay in the building but so long. M O U S E. <laughs> Our next meeting is Wednesday, March 27th. It's going to be at Penn Workman's Community Center at 895 Pennsylvania Avenue. And that's where our next month's meeting will take place. If you can make it there, we would greatly appreciate it. And we don't have to vote because we don't have a quorum. But thank you so much for community for coming out. Hopefully you had a good time. Please get home safe. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Well, can't take motion because you can't vote, but good night, everybody.